Have you ever wondered if your partner was a narcissist? And if so, what that actually means? Well, in this video, I'm going to help you differentiate between who a narcissist is, what narcissistic traits are versus a true full-blown person with narcissistic personality disorder. And we are going to go through some really important components of this overall so you can make a clear distinction about what to do. So first and foremost, narcissism technically, just like many other things, exists along a continuum. So we can have somebody who has narcissistic traits and you know certain narcissistic qualities or components of narcissism, but then on the full other end of the continuum, we will see somebody who actually has full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. And even how strong or how evolved that narcissistic personality disorder is can exist along its own stretch of that part of the continuum. So a lot of people often wonder because they see certain elements or traits like selfishness in the relationship or somebody being, um, you know, taking advantage of them or being manipulative or gaslighting. And we can think right away, okay, because this person did this, they must be a narcissist, but it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So essentially what you can think of is there, if from according to the DSM, there has to be five of these nine key qualities to decide if somebody actually has narcissistic personality disorder. Please keep in mind, you can't use this video to like actively diagnose somebody, but if you just wanted education about the DSM and some of the core qualities, I think that this would be quite helpful. So one of the first components is that narcissists tend to have this grandiose sense of self-importance. And they really tend to feel like they are much greater than, much more significant than, um, you know, other people. And they tend to have this sort of comparison drama that can kind of revolve around that, where they may think of how much more important their time is than others, or how much more important they are as a whole. And so that grandiose sense of self-importance is one of the crucial traits. Number two, and I'll go slowly so you can sort of, and you can feel free to pause this too if you'd like. Um, number two is narcissists tend to have a bit of a preoccupation with power, beauty, or success. Now, I remember personally working with a client years ago who absolutely had narcissistic personality disorder. And um, he would always say things to me like, nobody understands. So I was seeing him and, and um, his partner, and he said, nobody understands love like our love. Nobody could even dream to, to love, you know, each other, like we love each other. And it was almost like he just had this like unlimited idea of what love meant. And that was despite his relationship really being in, in shambles. And so, you know, that sort of idea of that, and that can exist along the continuum of power, being really preoccupied with power, um, social climbing, name dropping of powerful people, you know, you know, being really fixated on appearance, um, comparing your appearance to others, thinking your appearance is so much more attractive than others, and really just being preoccupied or fixated on these things, whether it be power, beauty, success, or love. Um, and number three, we will absolutely see a really strong sense of entitlement with narcissists. Um, and they can feel really entitled to, you know, your time, your emotional energy, um, you know, to how they treat perhaps like waiters or waitresses in a restaurant. They can sometimes be very like entitled about their treatment there. Um, so you'll see like a very strong sense of entitlement in a variety of different forms. Um, our next one here is that they tend to feel like they only want to spend their time around other people who they consider to be special or important. And this is because they have this really strong, um, you know, value around like status, power, importance, specialness. And the way I tend to think of this is from our six basic human needs, which we know are from um, Tony Robbins work. You know, we've got um, certainty and uncertainty and we have significance and we have connection and we have growth and we have contribution. The general way I see narcissists is that their need for significance is always significantly higher than their need for connection. And so it's almost like all the time in their relationships, they're trying to get their sense of connection met through significance. It's like they need to feel significant and validated as a means of connection. Um, and it's interesting to see how these sort of dynamics play out. Like, I know for myself personally, I have a really high need for contribution and it's actually a little bit higher than my need for connection. So I know that that even though that's a very high need for me too. So I know that for me, I sometimes fall into the trap if I'm not aware of it, of um, trying to like 
teach things to people or share things with people or like really go to my way to support them as kind of like a means of building connection. But sometimes that can leave me in this path of having like, you know, if I do that for too long and I'm not mindful, sometimes I can overgive and then not be great at asking for what I need back and end up in slightly skewed relationships that are more one-sided. And so I'm mindful of that. And I'm mindful about like, you know, paying attention to that. Or another example is I, I was speaking with somebody once and they were saying that, you know, um, their way of getting, like they had a much higher need for certainty than uncertainty. So their way of like getting their uncertainty or exploratory kind of needs met had a lot to do with doing it in like really safe ways, like watching the travel channel and seeing things rather than like going out and traveling and doing all sorts of experiences. So you'll see like the way our needs hierarchy is structured can impact this. And from the narcissistic point of view, really the, the true narcissist, their need for significance is so much greater than and higher than their need for connection. Um, the next big piece we'll see here. And again, remember, you just need five of nine to qualify for this. And if you're, by the way, as well, um, a, a um, sibling of a narcissist, a child of a narcissist, a um, partner of a narcissist, an ex of a narcissist, like there really is a lot of turmoil that comes with being in these kinds of relationships. And it's extremely valuable to do work around healing from narcissistic abuse um, and to really do work on healing and, and like reprogramming and reconditioning the wounds that were left from being because the, the subconscious mind is programmed through repetition plus emotion. So if you're constantly in somebody's company who's like this, they're going to program a lot of limiting beliefs into your subconscious about yourself, thinking that you can't fend for yourself or that you're too weak to be on your own, or you're never good enough, or you'll always be betrayed, right? So you can have a lot because you get a lot of betrayal wounds from that relationship. So if you ever see this and you want to do a deep dive, we have for the month of May, um, a 14 day trial to the entire school at PDS. And it's because um, in our 14 day trial, everything's free for 14 days because it's the mental health month of May. And so um, if you want to check out our overcoming narcissistic abuse course, um, it really is about like healing from the complexities of that experience and really goes deep into like how to address that at the subconscious level. And you can, again, check it out for free for 14 days using the link below. And there's so many other powerful courses in um, PDS around this. Like um, you know, whether it's the emotional mastery and belief reprogramming course, learning your boundaries again, um, a lot of those things are covered in the, the NPD abuse overcoming, um, course. So anyways, you can check those out and you have access to all the courses at PDS for free for 14 days and you have access to webinars. So come in, ask me questions. We have a daily webinar. We've got all kinds of community and social events. So come in, join in. I would love to see you there, um, and ask me any questions that you have. So anyways, going back to this. Um, so we have so far, just so we're super clear. So we have, um, number one, this grandiose sense of self, this huge sense of like self-importance, um, a preoccupation with unlimited beauty, power, success, or love, this sense of entitlement in so many different ways, um, this dynamic of feeling like you can only be around high powered, high important or special people. And it's not that they will think that they only can be around those people, but it's like, they'll really strive to be around those people. And they will feel like they don't want to waste their time with like other normal people because it's kind of like they're below them. Um, and you know, I'm all for like picking friends and people that are a match to your needs and, you know, sort of being in that space where you're intentional about the friendships you want to create or people you want to surround yourself with. But this is different in the sense that it's like, it's like it, they feel frustrated, angry, like people are lesser than them. And like, oh, this is a waste of my time. And they see literally people through the lens of like how special they are, or significant they are. And the next one we have is um, somebody who is um, interpersonally very manipulative or exploitive for their own gain. So they'll tend to exploit other people. Um, and, and this isn't like a somebody made a mistake. They accidentally... Um, you know, ask for too much support because they were in a vulnerable position. It's not like that. It's like, it's like they actually like premeditate a little bit about how to exploit people and what resources they can extract from people. And this may not just be like from the lens of like physical resources. It can actually be through the lens of like emotional resources, like getting attention, time, um, validation, like these sorts of different dynamics. And this is where you'll often hear this one. And the first one, when it was like the grandiose sense of self-importance, this is where you'll hear the term referred to as narcissistic supply. Like they're always needing this like sense of attention. And this brings me to the next one, which is there's a really strong sense of arrogance and you'll feel it. Like somebody will feel like, 
I personally believe that confidence is quiet. It's like subtle, right? Somebody, if they're confident, they don't need to prove to you how great they are. They just feel comfortable in their own skin. But when we see arrogance, or sometimes it's referred to as like a haughty attitude, um, that can definitely represent the narcissist. And our next one um, is this this really strong sense of just like lack of empathy. Um, and you may see sympathy sometimes with narcissists. They may like feel for people and kind of like sometimes express emotion, but sometimes that expression of emotion is kind of like being used as a tool to manipulate. Not always, but it can be. That's where you sort of think of the term like the crocodile tears. Um, or the expression of emotion can be like from this sympathetic space, but not like empathetic space. Like this person isn't taking the time to really consider like how you're feeling and what it feels like to be in your shoes as you. They're kind of like seeing the you through the projection of them as if you're kind of like the character in their story. And then we have this belief in a lot of narcissists that um, they believe that people are envious of them or they can be really preoccupied with envy around others. So technically, according to the DSM, you just need five of those nine to qualify. Um, and there's this huge, sorry, sense of admiration is a huge one as well. So this you know, grandiose sense of that need to be admired, to be, you know, seen and, and, thought of as like fantastic or great or powerful. So anyways, you'll see a lot of these things kind of have some, some similarities in there, but this is not supposed to be used as a tool to diagnose, but it can just help shed some light on like, if somebody just has narcissistic traits, because sometimes I find that people can think, oh, because my partner is selfish or self-oriented or because my partner, um, you know, gaslit something. And listen, gaslighting is a massive red flag. If somebody gaslights you, you should seriously consider leaving the relationship or like address it immediately. And the person should have like a strong apology and appreciation for why they made a mistake and, you know, these sorts of things. But I generally see that um, sometimes we can get confused in there. So these tend to be the really predominant traits that you want to watch out for. And I would highly advise if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, it's so valuable and so important to be able to walk away. And part of what the course covers that I was mentioning before, that free course that you can check out for 14 days, which is more than enough time to get through that course because um, it's like an hour and a half long, but it has a lot of tools in there. Um, part of what's so valuable about this is that it allows you to really see um, how to walk away. Sometimes we have these limiting beliefs that say, oh, I should stay, or we have limiting beliefs about ourselves or how we sort of got reeled into these types of relationships, but it actually helps you like what I call in the course, put on the suit of armor and do the necessary reconditioning of your subconscious mind to walk away without looking back. Um, so anyways, I hope this makes a whole lot of sense. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you check out our, our 14 day free trial. It's a PDF. There's lots of exciting stuff going on in there. Check out the webinar calendar specifically, because we've got all kinds of daily events that you can check out for live support, community, um, all that sort of exciting stuff. And thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in future videos.